Snap Judgment Studios. Daily Show correspondent Dulce Sloan and writer Josh Johnson are best friends who rarely agree on anything. On the new podcast called Hold Up with Dulce Sloan and Josh Johnson, they turn their hilarious, unpredictable, and legendary office banter into a war of words about topics big and small, mostly small, from texting versus calling to club bangers versus conscious rap and everything in between. Listen to Hold Up with Dulce Sloan and Josh Johnson from The Daily Show every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Attention shoppers, we now have Taste in the Bread Aisle, Dave's Killer Bread. That's right, an organic bread that's no longer a sedative for your taste buds. Dave's Killer Bread is on a mission to make the most of the loaf, to rid the world of GMOs, high fructose corn syrup, and artificial ingredients, and plant the seeds of good in all that they bake. Killer taste, killer texture, always organic. Dave's Killer Bread. Bread Amplified. Okay, so back in the day, a long, long time ago, I wasn't sheltering in place or on neighborhood lockdown or whatever it is we're doing now. But as unlikely as it seems, somehow, some way, somebody convinced little me to come in from outside, playing ball with my buddies, to sit down, to tame my boy energy and watch this movie they had. The Parent Trap. It's all about some bad girls who realize they're twins, they're separated at birth. And then they pull a bunch of tricks. And for some reason, they try to get their terrible parents who abandoned them to reunite and be together or whatever. And this film, it annoyed me. Because I was sure these supposed parents probably broke up for some very good reasons. But I guess it annoyed me for another reason as well, because I wanted to do the opposite of the parent trap. Like a lot of kids, I figured that my parents might not have been the best match a long time before they figured it out themselves. If they had made a movie instead about how these girls pulled pranks to break up their parents with the quickness instead of drowning it in ages of familiar torment, then I might have given this film my own Oscar. Well, today, instead of my own Oscar, we have amazing stories of real people who take their family situation into their own hands. We're calling it The Parent Trap. My name is from Washington. Little boys, they like monsters in their movies. And you're listening to Snap Judgment. Now then, ever since she was a child, V always knew about her parents' epic love story. But she never knew the song behind it. Producer Liz Mack brings us their story. Snap Judgment. My mom had told me that there was um, a reunion, a town reunion that was happening in L.A., and I had agreed to go. A town reunion is like when everyone from old Vietnam comes together, have a big old party, lots of food, lots of people, and um, they kind of, you know, relive each other for a moment. My mom was really excited. She really was stoked to see all of the people that she had grown up with. And my dad's kind of like, uh, I don't really want to go. I would rather stay home. I remember pulling up to um, kind of like classic L.A. Asian plaza. Um, I think it was a Chinese restaurant. But I remember in the inside everything being like 
prom like, this is going to be hella extra. My mom is, you know, greeting all these people and she's exuding all of this excitement, just like, oh my gosh, I love you. My dad, he doesn't say a whole bunch, you know, and dad's sort of on the side, like there, but not really there. I remember everyone looking really good. The women, whatever one layer of makeup they have on, they add like three more. Everyone has some heavy, what is that hairspray called? Aquanet? They got the, the tattooed eyebrows, some bright lipstick, sequin dresses. Everyone just trying to exude that aura like, hey, I'm still young and beautiful, just like how you remembered me. And we run into one of my mom's friends and and they're super excited to see each other. And my mom's friend is like, oh, this is my son Greenfield. And I'm like, well, that's a cool name. And um, his mom's like, he's named after the Greenfields in Vietnam. I'm like, whoa, yeah. And my mom's friend is like, I haven't seen you for so long. And she's like, yes, wait. Who are you? Like, she can't really remember who this person is. And she pulls out a photo and she's like, this is a photo of us in Vietnam. It's like, I look and it's the two of them in a black and white photo in their 20s. It was a funny thing walking through this party because everyone had like taken photos of an old photo of them younger so that they can kind of like re-identify the people in the party. So Greenfield's mom asked me to take a picture of the two of them. And they're smiling, holding each other. And Greenfield's mom's like, we used to be cellmates. In such a joyous way. And like Greenfield and I look at each other and we're like, I have so many mixed emotions about this because that's really traumatic, but you are really happy. After everyone is fed and feels good, then Greenfield's mom turns to my mom and is like, hey, it's time for karaoke. She's like, so um, why don't you sing that one song? And she's like, what song? And she's like, the song you would always sing in jail, like every single day. My mom's nervous and looks over to the MC, and the MC hands her the mic and she takes a breath walks on stage and begins to sing a song. So while she's singing the song, she's looking out, but she's really just looking at my dad and singing directly to my dad. So as my mom is singing, I get the sense that she's not really here, like... In her mind, she has actually gone back in time, back to when she's in her jail cell. My mom's told me this story over and over, you know, since I was a kid. My parents' love story started in 1972. My mom's working in a bank as a bank teller. My mom was young, she was living in Saigon at the time. And then somebody she knew decided to set her up. Hey, I want to introduce you a person. And it's a very nice person. I said, okay. So after work, I went to my home 
and she brought him over. And I look at him, I say, oh my God, I don't want, no, no. <laughs> because at first, the appearance, not exactly what I want. When she first meets my dad, she's like, are you kidding me? Like, this dude? The thing you gotta know is, it's like, my mom wasn't just your average girl. My mom was kind of the shit. She was beautiful and charming and had seven different guys trying to court her. She could have chose anybody. And I told myself, nothing suitable for me. Go away. So she sabotaged it from the beginning. And I told myself, oh my God, I, I am going to give him something that he will never forget. That way he won't come anymore. Give him the tea from yesterday, cold tea. Which is like basically the biggest diss you can give. There's no going back, yeah. Except she started to feel kind of bad. And then because... I was too nice. I said, we can be pen pal, okay? Yeah, and then, and then he just wrote a letter. I mean, these letters gave my dad a fighting chance. Good handwriting. I said, wow, good. Kind of opening doors between the two of them as they're sending them back and forth. You develop your emotion together in the letter. And then... In the letter, sometimes you write poems. And all these letters, over time, they slowly win my mom over. Good handwriting, and also he's hardworking, very low maintenance. And also uh, he's willing to do things that uh, I want him to do, you know. So after two and a half years, they get married. But they happen to fall in love at a very dangerous time. The Vietnam-American War had just ended, the communists had taken over, and there was just total instability everywhere. So my mom and dad decided the best chance at the life they wanted was to escape Vietnam together. He said, we need to leave. And I said, how? He said, it's already arranged by his friend. Yeah. My mom and dad leave from Saigon to the countryside, and it takes them like a day and a half to get out there. They change out of their city clothes and into countryside clothes, all black. Um, and my dad's hidden a boat out there for them to escape. They decided to leave on a winter night. Just imagine leaving behind all your friends, your family, your whole country, just you and the love of your life. And that's it. And just run. Because we want to have freedom. And also, at the time, as I was young, and just had the passion to go. The men get on the boat first, and they push off the beach. On board, there's these false floorboards for them to hide under, just in case they get spotted. They sail down the coast, to where the women are waiting, and that's where they gave him the signal. One of the men has a cigarette, and he's holding it up, and they can see the embers, so they see a light, light puff, like in two inhales and an exhale. And when that comes, then the women know to jump on. The boat is very, very, very small. 14 people. It was so small. It's very small. It cannot survive on, on the, the ocean. I mean, the ocean was their only option. They took 14 people and they put them on the boat and they sailed down the coast into the sea. It was the gateway out of the country. 
It's a um, very peaceful night, and the, the moon was very bright, and we were on the boat on the sea. Very beautiful. And then that night is a silent night, December 24. And I sang silent night in Chinese and in English, and we were so happy. Yes. And then, and then we thought we already passed the boundary. We were so happy when sing and everything. There are few hours of quiet as they move through the dark water. They were near the border of Vietnam and almost had their first taste of freedom. And then they saw something approach. A big boat. I don't know because maybe people, people know that we're singing. I don't know. They told us to stop, but instead of stopping, they just put more gas on and they run faster. They chased my mom and dad on the boat, and then they started shooting. They shoot many, many bullets right where I was, underneath the boat. Two people died on the boat that night. And the rest of the refugees, my mom and my dad, were taken in. When we return, these mom and dad face the consequences. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Snap Judgment, the Parent Trap episode. When last we left, after an attempt to escape from Vietnam fails, these mom and dad find themselves worse off than ever before. Snap Judgment. After they were caught, they were put on a prison on an island called Gong Dao. So they separated the men from the women. My mom only knew that my dad was in a prison somewhere on that same small island. My mom always described her first night in jail vividly. Very scary. Yeah. And no food and dark, very dark and cold. She didn't like the food and she made sure that everyone knew it. When I look at the, at the bowl of rice, I said, no, I don't want it. And then, and then the person, he shut the door, and then he looked at me from the window. The window is only a slot, only show his eyes. And I was so scared, oh my God. And he said, see how long you can starve. The jail has nobody. The jail has at least 40 rooms, and we only have five people inside and each person very far away. And you cannot talk with anybody. Sometimes I talk with ants on the floor. You have nothing to do. They make you just stay in the room, nothing. Mm-hmm. And then I say, okay, let me sing. <laughs> She would sing the same song every day, several times a day. The the song described the sunset with beautiful color and then two people holding hand together walking on the beach and happily watching the ocean and also the, the beautiful color of the sunset. And I, I told myself I like the song because I like to walk on this beach with my husband. So that's why I, I sing the song. 
she used to sing it with her face towards the window, hoping my dad would hear. I want to sing it loud so that my husband know where I am. I'm still alive. I don't know where he is, but I want to, I want to sing it loud so that someday he walk outside and he's, he, he can hear me. That's why I sing so many times in a day. When she sang to my dad, she imagined herself in the future with him, where they'd be together. My mom sang that song every day for nine months until she got released. It turns out the women were released before the men. But my parents have their own version of the story. He said that he, he also prayed that I can be released earlier. They say that my mom got released earlier because my dad had made a deal with God that he would stay longer in prison if she got to go out first. She used to tell me that because of that, that's how she knew that he loved her. He stayed there for me, that I, that I know that he loved me. A few months after my mom got out, my dad did too. It took him another two years to save up to escape Vietnam entirely, and eventually they made it to San Francisco. The first thing my mom wants to do when they get to San Francisco is hold hands and walk on the beach in their new home. Yeah, we walk on the beach in San Francisco. <laughs> it's different. It is so cold and you need to wear, oh my God, you need to wear the jacket. <laughs> it was a windy, cold day. It wasn't what she thought. It's not the same as the, as the song. But my mom and dad were really close. And in the beginning of their life in the U.S., they were just as in love as ever. Strong. Yeah, very strong because because over here we build we build our family together. They have this beautiful love song life and then I think everything I think life kind of just happens, you know. After probably after after 7 or 8 years they're just both, um, I think, just in that dirty grind of working and children and sending money back home. They're supporting everyone around them and didn't have anything else to give. There's a photo of the two of them that would sit um, in the foyer of our house where they, they're getting married um, and they're in... They're in the car together, and they have, you know, white speckles of confetti all over them. And the both of them look just totally like that surprise smile, um, just caught in the moment. And they're both kind of like looking up at the camera. Um, It's such a beautiful photo. They look like... For a moment, it was, everything was just still. And so I think it became slowly and slowly over time, I think as I witnessed it, um, I've kind of forgotten about your love and I've forgotten about like who you are. Growing up, it, it always felt like, like maybe at another time, there was like a love, there was a passion, there was something deeper. I think what's also embedded in my memories too are, you know, pictures and home videos and stuff of them being happier. Um, but I think their relationship that I witnessed growing up was pretty transactional. They stopped talking about their love story in the present tense, and then they started talking about it as something of the past. You 
前方，不只有我和你，只有我和你在一起，我们永远生在图画里。When I sang the song, and I know that I was on the stage, but I I feel like oh I was in jail,、mm. and I just imagine get out of jail and go to the beach. I mean inside that the song. So my mom's singing on stage, and tears are streaming down her face, and she's looking straight at my dad the whole time. And the whole room sees them two looking at each other. I just looked over to my dad, and my dad had a blank stare. When he saw me sing, and he kind of like, hmm, was she singing? He does. He doesn't feel the same feeling. I cry at the at the stage because I say, oh, how come it is different at that moment? And I want it to be the same. But I cannot because because time already passed by. My mom finishes the song and she walks down the stage and everyone's like handing her flowers and kind of like hugging and weeping with her. And she walks back to the table and sits down next to him, and everyone's like looking at him to see what he's reacting as or like what. He's gonna say, and he kind of has this blank stare, not really responding. He just turned to her, gave her a napkin to wipe her tears, and patted her on the back. It's a weird thing to watch someone have no emotional reaction to someone else who had put out so much emotion. I guess I feel towards my mom that mixture of like sadness that she's holding on to it. I feel like it's. I feel like seeing her through this. It's like. It's like she's always waiting for that romantic time that may never come. I don't think my dad really understood what was going on. I think also he doesn't romanticize things. That's sort of how he is. Like my mom doesn't drive a car because she got in a car accident. My dad drives her everywhere. That's like, hey, I'm doing this act of service. I love you. And then she's like, well, you're you're just helping with my business. And he's like, "Well, what else did you ask for? You haven't asked me for anything else." Um, and I think that's what makes me really sad because it's like she's she has kind of this fantasy、um, that isn't the reality or something that my dad will partake in. I think she knows that it's no longer in the jail cell or singing a song or、um, that war story, you know. And so it's almost like she'll never be satisfied. I think I need to start from the beginning. It's hard, yeah, it's、okay、yeah,、mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Because long time I don't sing the song. <laughs> yeah. Xiang yi xia shi jian you xiang xi, liu xia liao wan xia geng yan li. 晚风轻轻吹送到苍堤，带来了一阵清凉意。海边上也吹起乌涟漪，和天边晚霞都艳丽。我们缓缓走向图画里，让晚霞照映在大地。Big, special, huge thanks to V and her mom for sharing that story with us at Snap. The original score for that piece was by Pat Mesiti Miller. It was produced by Liz Mack. Oh, it happened. 
again. It happened again, I know. If you missed even a moment, get the amazing Snap Judgment Podcast. Take it with you wherever you go. If you're out facing the world or you're inside distancing yourself from the world, storytelling, our storytelling is here to keep you company. Snap Storytelling is made possible by people just like you. So if you love Snap Stories, protect them. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash snap judgment. That's patreon.com slash snap judgment. And get Snap stuff like a sticker or a mug or both. Patreon.com slash snap judgment. Show the world Snap Storytelling is here to stay. And if you like your stories. In the dark of night, we've got something for you. Spooked has returned. It's available right now at Luminary.com. Amazing, true life, supernatural stories told firsthand by the people who can scarcely believe it happened themselves. Be afraid. But Snap. Snap is brought to you by the team that likes things just the way they were before all this nonsense. And no one, no one is stronger in that sentiment than the Uber producer, Mr. Mark Ristich. Time Machine Miller, Anna Sussman, Renzo Gorio, John Fasile, Shayna Sheely, Liz Mack, Marissa Dodge, Nick Singh, Eliza Smith, Lauren Newsom, Taylor Decott, Flo Wiley, Nancy Lopez, and Leon Morimoto. Wow. This is not the news. You know this is not the news. No way is this the news. In fact, you could pull a bunch of pranks on the evil girlfriend who your dad was about to marry, only for him to marry her anyway and give you one very, very, very upset stepmother. Oh, no. All that, and he would still, still not be as far away from the news as this is. But this is PR. <laughs>